Throughout the heart of Europe's wilderness, an elusive predator quietly thrives. From Greece to Hungary to France, the Eurasian jackal is a highly adaptable species able to succeed in an ever-changing world. They have an ever-growing range across the continent, yet despite their proximity to many, golden jackals remain a mystery. To try and learn more, I've travelled to Romania, where I'll be trying to film golden jackals in the wild. And then later, in Austria, I'll be meeting with some scientists who have found a unique way of uncovering some of this elusive species secrets. I have travelled to Romania to spend the next week in a hide trying to film the golden jackals in the wild for myself. It's incredibly hot here, it's over 40 degrees Celsius in these hides, so it's going to be a challenging week, but hopefully that challenge will pay off with some amazing sightings. So as long as I stay quiet, I should be in luck. Although there's no sign of any jackals just yet, Romania's beautiful birds and small mammals are keeping me and my camera busy in the meantime. After many hours waiting in the heat, fortunately some curious visitors decided to pay a visit to the hide. Their name derives from the colour of their fur, a bright reddish chestnut colour that spans their thighs, upper legs, ears and forehead. These canids are primarily nocturnal and highly intelligent. They often hunt alone or occasionally in a pair, but rarely do they hunt in a pack. Like other canids, they communicate with each other through greetings, grooming, and group howling. Throughout the week, this family of jackals continue to give me incredible sightings. But on my final day, just in the last few moments of light, they revealed one last hidden surprise. Although it's been incredible seeing these jackals thriving in their natural habitat, like many other species across the globe, the golden jackal is facing an uncertain future. They're being hunted and persecuted as supposed livestock predators, as well as losing habitat due to the alteration of traditional land use practices. So to try and find out more, I'd like to see how they're adapting to the changing world in other places around Europe. I've travelled to Austria in order to meet up with some of the key scientists involved in golden jackal research here in Europe. Jennifer and Stefan are working together to research the content and distribution of jackal scat to help us better understand this species. But it's Stefan's dog, Robin, that has the skills needed for this kind of work. In 2015, I decided to start this pilot project, the Golden Jackal project in Austria, to first start searching for them and to try to look how do I find packs. So we then uh, decided we want to look at scats and did scat analysis. Then we realized that for humans, it's quite hard to distinguish the scats. We know that the scats of foxes and jackals look quite alike. So that is when the dogs come in. The dogs are trained to search only jackal scats. So we're, we're trying to put them in different kinds of like harder habitats because we don't know exactly how do jackals position the scats. With wolves, it's a little bit different. You know, they're usually using the paths. At the beginning, we just started more or less chaotic like uh, just tried it with the dogs and later on it formed kind of an alliance and um, foundation. It's nature conservation dogs in Austria. Yeah, it's very interesting to work with an animal and not with a car or a machine. It's always in detector. It's with the dog, it's more complex. 
Once the detection dog found the scat, we will uh, put it into a plastic bag, freeze it until we have enough of scats. After they retrieve the jackal scat, Jennifer takes it back to the lab for analysis. So the jackal's diet, it depends basically on what is available the most. So the main aim for looking at the scats and looking at their diet is to see the distribution of prey species, for example. In some areas there might be conflict because they're uh, preying on lambs or goats and that might cause problems. So what I can see here already is a little bit actually a lot of small mammal hair. So we're doing a little bit of sorting here. What I find really exciting and interesting about jackals is actually they surprise me all the time with many things, but mostly also with the habitat. They're this generalist, yes, we know that. Uh, however, previously it was said they're in lowlands, in reed areas, and now in Austria we can watch them living in the alpine regions so and also in continuous forests and it shows in Europe that they will adapt to the habitat so they they are adaptable and that is also one strength that you can see in jackals and that makes them quite successful. And we had the times um, where people and predators and also other wild animals were living together and we had the use of them as well and there was a spiritual way also and Bears and wolves were kind of spiritual creatures. So, yeah, the wolf cannot be that bad, I think, or the jackal. <laughs> it is still unclear what the jackal's future will look like across Europe. But what is clear is that more research is needed to be able to fully understand this species and how they are adapting to our ever-changing world.